Welcome to the Short Score, the Team Roping Journal's weekly updates from the team roping world, including from Pro Rodeo, Major Jackpots, USTRC, and World Series of Team Roping Qualifiers, and more, with hosts Chelsea Schaefer and Caitlin Gustav. Hi, Caitlin. Hey, Chelsea. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Short Score. This is a fun episode. It is a fun episode. It is a Tuesday, June. I don't know why I try to say that, whatever day it is, because I never know what day it is, so I should skip that part. The 11th. It's, yeah, it's Tuesday, June 11th. Yeah. But you can listen to this anytime, so it's not like you're listening to it on Tuesday, June 11th, unless you're one of our most diehard fans, which we love. <sighs> I hope that means, when I say that you're one of our most diehard fans, that means you've actually clicked the subscribe button on iTunes, which is where like 75% of you are listening to this podcast. That means you've clicked subscribe, you get a notification on your phone when Caitlin manages to get the episode uploaded to iTunes, and you are the first to know, and the first to know the gossip. When I don't forget that it's a Tuesday, yeah, and we need to have the score up. Hey, that happens rarely. One time. One time. One time. One time. (laughs) <laughs> oh man. Okay. I admit to my failures. <laughs> I'm glad. Really appreciate it. That you're so honest with your shortcomings. Um, but anyway, all right, everybody. This is an episode where we will talk about Rodeo New York City, which I got to speak with Patrick Gotch of RFD TV and the Cowboy Channel, and he talks about the new World Champions Only Rodeo in New York City. And that's going to be Father's Day weekend in June of 2020. But he gives us the rundown. But that's much later in this episode because you've got a lot of ground to cover before we get there. There's a lot of ground to cover. Mm-hmm. Pro Rodeo News. Dustin Bird and Trey Yates won the Sisters Rodeo in Oregon with a 5.2 second run. That paid $4,242 a man. That's pretty sweet. Yep. I know Trey's kind of been down on himself. He's mm-hmm. been in a slump. Him and Bird are just kind of kicking off their run. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a really big win for them. Yep. Yeah, Bird is just broke into the top 50 at 45th um, with $13,144.50. And Trey, although he's in a slump, he's just shy of the top 15, sitting in the 16th spot with $24,050.17. Some slump, Trey. I know, Trey. Clipping down on yourself. I mean, I will say <laughs> that if there's anybody who can pull somebody out of a slump, mm-hmm. it's Dustin Bird. Heading and horsemanship aside, Dustin's attitude is pretty great. I don't know if... I, I bet if the Cowboys voted, like, best attitude, having the most fun on the rodeo road. <laughs> bird, 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 yeah. bird, bird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's having a great time, and I'm sure uh, Trey is having a great time healing behind him mm-hmm. just after, after this first weekend, so... Yeah, not a bad run. Good news. Good news. Mm. Tate Kirkenslager, he, I mean, we've seen his name a bunch Yeah. lately. Uh, he is now roping with Buddy Hawkins, and they won the Woodward Elks Rodeo in Oklahoma with a 5.7 second run. That paid $1,986 a man. They also tied Blake Hughes and Braden ha- Harmon for fourth at the 101 Wild West Rodeo in Ponca City, Oklahoma, with a... There was a motorcycle that just went past my office, everybody. Please excuse Sorry, guys. the background noise. <laughs> Caitlin, go on. <laughs> With a five oh second run worth $1,013 a man. And they also placed fourth at the Mesquite Texas Championship Rodeo with a 5.7 second run. That paid just $233. $33 a man, but money is money. And with Tate right now? Oh, yeah. That's so exciting for Tate. Okay, we are, I mean, I don't think we should make any secrets about it. We are on Team Tate Kirkenschlager right am. now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he just got engaged. Yes, congratulations. Congratulations. That's um, awesome. So, I mean, Tate, they won San Antonio. A huge win for him. He has been working on making great horses, putting on ropes in the background. So now we are excited for Tate to be cracking out. That's awesome. Yeah, he's sitting eighth right now in the world standings with $39,920. We actually have an episode of the short score mm-hmm. with Tate Kirkenschlager. So scroll back through your iTunes feed or your I, uh, Apple podcasts and look for Tate Kirkenschlager mm-hmm. because we talked to him after his big win at San Antonio. So, yeah. Buddy Hawkins is hot, of course. He's winning. Um, it's awesome to see him winning and hopefully making it back to the finals. 
And more news. Uh, Junior D's and Lane Siggins won the Livermore California Rodeo with a 5.3 second run. Uh, They won $2,688 a man. And then they tied for eighth at the Sisters Rodeo with a 6.1 second run that paid $893. Junior is sitting 23rd in the world standings with $19,549.12, and Siggins is 28th with $18,697.45. So, cool. Uh, good win Junior for them. Dees, he's been kind of close, you know, mm-hmm. since he made it the first year, he has been close, so, or last year he was really close, so hopefully he has another good summer. Yeah, no kidding. And then Eric Rogers, there's a story. He is partnered up with Peyton Bray, resist all rookie contender this year. Yeah, we have a story on teamropingjournal.com about that partnership, Mm -hmm. so check it out. Mm -hmm. They're hot right now. They won the Ute Mountain Roundup Rodeo in Cortez, Colorado with a 4.2 second run. That paid $2,086 a man. They also placed seventh at the Pioneer Days Rodeo in Clovis, New Mexico with a long 10.1 second run that paid. Uh, 390 a man. I heard the steers were tough at Clovis. Were they? Mm-hmm. I hadn't heard. Yeah. That would make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That Bray, he, he heals them. They were them. fresh, I believe, and strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Rogers is 37th in the world standings with $15,051.79, and Payton is in the top five of the resist all rookie standings right now, so. Yeah, heck yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Well, glad to see it. Payton out and about. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, now, into World Series and USTRC news. All right. First, we're going to talk about the Heartlander Open in Hamilton, Texas. Paid $36,820 per, for the first place team. How many holes did it pay? It paid eight holes. And who was the first place team? First place was Trace Moore and Mert Stewart. They were 32 89 on forehead. They won each $18,410. That was in the 12.5 Heartland Finale roping in Hamilton, Texas. You guys should be entering those ropings. Those ropings are huge. The payouts are huge. They don't happen very often. There's few and far in between, but they're great big ropings. Awesome. And then on to the USTRC stuff. Michael Lucero, Pancho Trujillo, they won the Red Rock Classic in Gallup, New Mexico. They won the 9.5. That was the highest paying roping of the of the weekend there in Gallup. And they won $5,140. So they were 47 and 76 on four in the 9.5. So that's kind of the big money win from the USTRC mm-hmm. news. You guys, we can't forget... Big news. Stay tuned for your July issue yep. of the Team Roping Journal. Which I saw. If you have the app, the Team Roping Journal app on your phone. It's out. It's out on the Team Roping Journal app, which that's like a glitch on our end. But <laughs> if you want to check it out, download the app, uh, buy this individual issue, or subscribe to the digital subscription, and you can see the July issue first. But so the whole reason we are on that side, uh, <laughs> on that side point is that Caitlin was going to talk about... Open World Series Qualifier. It's a qualifier for the open guys to rope at the South Point at the World Series finale this year. And it is brought to you by... The Team Roping Journal. Yes, you are welcome, welcome, open ropers. Don't say we never did anything for you. And, Caitlin, you said open guys, but... I mean, I want to see Whitney healing them down. Oh, yeah. Anyone and, I and everyone see can be in this. I want to see Larry D. I want to see Jackie. I want to see all the girls that rope so freaking great roping at that open qualifier. It's going to be mm-hmm. great. Yeah, they're the one at Hamilton they just had. I was scrolling through, and it popped up, and I got excited. Um, Caleb Driggers and Jake Long won it. It paid $5,940 as a team. So split, that's $2,970. That's a pretty big payout. They're still kind of getting the ball rolling on these open ropings. Mm -hmm. We we want you guys all entering. It's going to be awesome. Caleb and Jake, they were $25.41 on forehead. That's pretty awesome. I'm excited. I can't wait to watch these guys. The top, I mean, obviously top 15 are in contract when they're at the NFR. So it's going to be cool to see those top 16 down. Yeah. And girls, whoever wants to enter and get qualified, it's going to be a great opportunity for everyone at the finale. Yeah. We're going to be there. Of course, you know, 
uh, the guys that are going to get rope at the World Series at the Open, the Team Roping Journal Open, we will be there with video coverage, mm-hmm. with, you know, Caitlin and I will both be there interviewing with the podcast. It's going to be just as special as all the other divisions. Um, I'm sure the crowd's going to be standing room only because the crowd's standing room only for the 10 there in Las oh, Vegas. Yeah. So it's going to be an exciting event, and I'm glad that we're covering it. I'm glad that we are able to bring it to you guys um, with our partners at the World Series. So we will be kind of keeping up with all of those qualifiers throughout the year. We'll be pushing it, and we want to see you there. All right. Moving on, we want to talk about the calendar. What is going on? Where are your ropings coming up this next weekend? The Hill Productions is going to put on the SummerSlam, June 14th to 16th. 4M Star Productions, uh, roping June 15th. These are USTRC ropings and um, and NFTR earnings ropings. The Signature Series roping that's this weekend from the USTRC is the North Alabama Championships. That's in Rainesville, Alabama. Remember, Jeff Smith Productions Iowa Championships is canceled this weekend. Don't show up. It's not happening. Um, <laughs> and then one weekend out, the USCRC's Virginia Championships, Double D Arena, where it's Virginia. That's June 22nd and 23rd. So there's your USCRC schedule. And World Series schedule. Uh, this weekend, starting Friday, is the Amarillo, Texas Qualifier. That's an MC3 roping. Uh, those ropings are always great. Um, we also have Athens, Texas Qualifier, hosted by James Watson. That's another great roping. Make sure you guys get over there. Um, and then the following weekend, we Reno. are going to Reno. Oh, yeah. That's going to be awesome. There's the Reno, Nevada qualifier, the CA shootouts, California shootouts. That's going to be a great one. Um, BFI week. That's all rolling. So make sure you're out there and roping. It's going to be a great week. Um, and then there's also the Rio Doso, New Mexico qualifier, Shelly Productions. And then Friday, uh, June 28th, is Jackson Hole, Wyoming, qualifier by Triple T. That is always an amazing roping, that one in Jackson Hole. Yeah. Uh, it's so pretty. I might have to drive up there. Mm, that'd be nice. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed this interview with Patrick Gotch. Um, we talk about the new rodeo that will be in Madison Square Gardens, kind of where rodeo gained a lot of fame worldwide um, in the early days of the sport back in the 20s. Uh, that's where you could see that all the Wild West shows and the trick ropers and the all, all the bronco-busting competitions <laughs> that, that happened back then. And now, you know, it's been 30 years, 29 years actually, since the last rodeo in Madison Square Gardens. The PBR has built a huge following there. And now... The Cowboy Channel, um, who also you know also affiliated with RFD TV and the American, they are bringing rodeo back during uh, Father's Day weekend, June 2020, to New York City. So I'm glad I got to talk to the man in charge of that operation, Patrick Gotch, and you can listen to it here. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Hey, Patrick. Yes. Hey, this is Chelsea Schaefer with the Team Rope and Journal. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much for having the time today. Everything everything good your way? Are you in Texas right now? Yes, I am. Awesome. Very cool. Well, um, I wanted to talk to you about the, the rodeo in New York City at Madison Square Gardens. That's super exciting for the sport. And um, so I was hoping you might have a chance to visit about it. Um, and I wanted to start off with why has rodeo been gone for so long from New York City? Uh, that's hard to say. I talked to some of the old promoters, and uh, he said they always had good luck there, but uh, you know, the NFR was there for years uh, in the 50s, 60s, and early 70s, then moved to Oklahoma City, then moved to uh, to Las Vegas. But, uh, you know, Rodeo had a strong connection with Madison Square Garden, you know, about 50 years ago. And, and uh, um, I was surprised. I think part of it is, uh, you know, the expense of doing a rodeo in Madison Square Garden kind of shies people away. <clears throat> We're in a unique position with the Cowboy Channel where we have uh, other alternatives. Uh, you know, we'd like to make make a profit on the rodeo, but, but uh, our main thing is getting exposure in New York, get more carriage for the Cowboy Channel, and, uh, get people to listen to rural radio and, uh, more, and then... Uh, uh, a lot of our advertisers and sponsors are on the East Coast, so to have a rodeo at Madison Square Garden, you know, we think uh, 
we'll be able to get a lot of advertisers for the Ponzi store. That's um, exciting. Yeah, but but going to New York, it, it's really, it's just really exciting. It, you know, we have a, a great time every year. I'm really proud of what we're doing at AT and T Stadium with uh, with the Americans, and to have a, a unique video with championship Cowboys, and championship stock, and, and hold it in an iconic building has kind of been our uh, our um, uh, motive for doing these things, and, and to go in and now do one in, in New York on top of the American. It's just, it's really exciting to us too. Absolutely. Now, what did it take? Did it take much convincing to the city of New York or to Madison Square Gardens to host a rodeo? No. In, in fact, I'm glad you asked that question. Madison Square Garden jumped at the idea. Uh, they loved having rodeo there in the past. Uh, of course, we had a, we have a good reputation with what we do at AT and T Stadium. So they just they jumped at it for us to get Father's Day weekend uh, a year from now. And that's a, that's a real prime weekend for them, and uh, and uh, you know they cooperated one hundred percent. They're really behind it. Mm-hmm. That's great news. And, and so is so is the, the city of New York. The, the, you know, we hired a, a local PR firm, Hilltick and Associates. Everybody's really excited. It, it's really this it has been you know over thirty years. Um, it, it's it's almost like it's something new for New York, and, and uh, you know they like the cowboy image too. And you know, Don Don Imus was waiting used to promote rodeo on his radio show every week or every month, and his it, son uh, roping and, and so on. It's uh, it, you know it, it's got that new factor I think coming uh, too, and of course the PBR does uh, extremely well now in uh, sure in Vancouver Garden every January, so. You know, that's a good indicator, too. They, they love bull riding, so, you know, we want to take them team roping and tie down roping and saddle bronc and barrel racing and, and breakaway roping and so on. Yeah, now there's there's a couple things I want to talk about there. How are competitors going to qualify for this event? Do you guys have that sorted out yet? And is it going to be sanctioned by any of the major associations? No, this is really more or less going to be an exhibition. Okay. And and, uh, and what we've done is we've invited only world champions oh. in each event, active world champions in each event, and it totaled about sixty five, and uh, sixty three of them jumped at the chance to do this. So uh, it's going to be a real unique rodeo with with only world champions competing against each other, uh, and the stock contest packages, uh, the folks at Frontier and so on, have been extremely. Uh, supportive, and, and they've promised to uh, to take their best stock there. Wow! Now so it'll be quite so. And then, then we're going to mix in everything we can about Western lifestyle, Western culture. Mm-hmm. You know, and of course, do uh, do some uh, trick roping, and uh, and, and uh, oh, we've also got the uh, theater at Madison Square Garden rented for each day. We'll have a large fan zone there each day mm-hmm. where people can come in. We're not. A, Exactly sure everything we're going to do in there, but it'll be a real a real Western lifestyle experience uh, for people that have a ticket to come in early and, and go through our fan zone with with uh, art and furniture and, and uh, music and and just everything that has to do with with uh, with a great uh, uh, rodeo and a Western experience. What do you think? I mean, I know during the PBR in January there was a lot of press coverage of of in the mainstream media of the rodeo, of the fashion, of the culture. How do you think um, it's uniquely available right now that there's going to be a market for this in, in New York City? I mean, are, are folks from uh, Brooklyn and, and in Manhattan going to come out and be cowboys for a day? What are you thinking there? Yeah, well, that's what we're working on. Again, we've got this great PR firm, but we're planning to go up early. Uh, it's a little early to say specific plans, but of course, you know, we're looking to do some things in Times Square and create some interest. We're, we're, we're going to work to get, you know, some of the, uh, the the world champion cowboys on the Today Show and Good Morning America. And oh, wow, cool. Take around there, uh, get inter- interviewed on WABC radio. Um, and, I, and again, I, I think the difference between us and PBR is they're in the middle of winter, we're in the middle of summer. 
Uh, we can invite people to come in, especially, I mean, our rodeo in, in uh, the American is very well attended from people in 48 states. Mm. Uh, I think this will be the same thing and just be very unique where people, you know, we can promote, you know, come to New York, they'll see a play, uh, see a great rodeo for the first time in Madison Square Garden. And, uh, you know, the middle of June on Father's Day weekend, we're going to invite them to, to uh, you know, take Dad to a rodeo. It's going to be one of our major promotions. Very cool. Very cool. Now, how's the format going to play out? Have you, it's a, it's four days, three days, four days? And what's, yeah, what's three the Three days, four performances. We'll have a performance Saturday, or Friday night at 7, a Saturday at noon and 7 p.m., mm-hmm. and then a performance on Sunday. And then there'll be a, uh, you know, all, all the athletes, all the uh, competitors agree to compete in all four performances. So oh, there'll great. Be, there'll be a champion, uh, there'll be a, a champion of champions crowned uh, on, on Sunday. Very cool. Will the team rope and pay equal money to headers and healers? Yes, ma'am. Very great. Very great to hear. And um, you chose to include break, include breakaway roping. You guys included it the American. What's behind including breakaway roping? Yeah, we're going to include breakaway in everything we do going forward. It was such a we, we well received uh, a new event uh, at the American, and, and you know just great uh, participation by uh, all the competitors. And, and uh, you know, of course, we uh, love getting uh, the ladies more involved in rodeo. So. We're going to keep it in everything we do. The American, uh, the semifinals, Rodeo New York, and and then probably start holding some events ourselves for breakaway roping and team roping uh, right here in the stockyard uh, once our new studio gets open next to the Fort Worth Palace Pan. That's awesome. I know the ladies and I in the office absolutely love to hear that. That's something special. (laughs) Very cool. Thank you so much. Tell me, what is your desire, what is behind your desire to make this happen? Personally, well, we've got several goals. One is the launch of the Cowboy Channel, and, and the Cowboy Channel is intended to be everything for for uh, Western sports. What the Golf Channel is for golf, and, and the NBA Channel for basketball, and the Hockey Channel, Tennis Channel, and so on. So we want to be doing a mixture. We, of course, we want to do reports every day and news every day, and really start covering all the different rodeos and uh, Western events that are out there. Uh, but we also want to have a couple marquee events of our own uh, that are on our network. So this will fit in real well with the American going on in March and uh, Rodeo New York going on in June. Uh, and then we've got the Cheyenne Frontier Day that we're going to be carrying all nine, nine days live in, in July. And then uh, what we do out at uh, NFR every year. Uh, you know, that'll, that'll be a pretty complete... Uh, year for us uh, heck yeah uh, to be covering absolutely very cool and now I've got to ask before we uh, close up what are there already plans in place for dealing with protesters I, New York City seems like a hot spot when it comes to that yeah everybody has that question yeah we'll be prepared for it again we've got this a good PR firm up there but uh, and I've checked with, uh, PBR doesn't have Many issues now, and uh, and the rodeo that did take place in Madison Square Garden, uh, they didn't really have any problems. But uh, you know, of course, it's a new day and age, so you know there might be some there. But we're not going to hide anything. You know, we're very proud of rodeo and the way that stock contractors take care of their animals, and and uh, the cowboys and cowgirls take care of their horses. And uh, you know, we're not going to try to hide anything. Yes. An accident that takes place here and there every once in a while, but uh, you know we're proud of the sport. We're going to showcase it, and uh, and hopefully we don't have to uh, deal too much with that, those kinds of things. But we're prepared for it. Absolutely. All right. Well, is there anything else you want people to know about Rodeo New York before we close up? Well, just uh, especially people on the East Coast, there's their chance to to come in and support Championship Rodeo and. and uh, you know, our goal, of course, I'm hoping we got four sellouts one way or another. And that, that uh, this will be the first of, of doing Rodeo in New York uh, every year on Father's Day weekend. We want to make it a tradition. 
That's awesome. Well, I will make sure it's booked into my travel schedule for June 2020. So thank you so much. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Come on. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Patrick. I appreciate your time. Anytime. All right. Bye, guys. All right. Thank you so much to Patrick and everybody at the Cowboy Channel for bringing um, this interview to us and for your time this morning. Also, it's the score week. Oh, I almost yeah. forgot. Stay tuned. Thursday, special interview with Travis Tryon <gasps> talking about his great horse, Walt. I, I love this episode. I say that all the time, but these horse episodes are really something special to me. Um, it's a great way to be able to highlight what's going on in, in, in amazing horses and try to identify some factors that run through all these same great horses. Who's it brought to you by? Fastback Ropes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Fastback Ropes is presenting this episode. Um, they have been our partners. I love companies in this industry who just jump on and support our efforts. They support The more companies support coverage of team roping, mm-hmm. the more this industry is able to grow. Because when that happens, we are able to share more information, you know, bloodline information, breeder information, where horses were started. The more we share that information, the more knowledge you all have to go out and make purchasing decisions and to go out and... Um, more, the more it energizes the industry. Uh, so uh, you got to thank these companies like Fastback um, that are just signing on and supporting coverage of the sport of team repping because, believe it or not, that helps the sport grow, and we appreciate it so much. So go ahead. If you're making a you know purchasing decision, keep that in mind. Thanks, everybody. Ray, before we go, remember to subscribe. Remember to like this podcast. Um, give us some five stars, four stars, three stars, two stars, one star, depending on what you think. Hopefully and five. Hopefully five. We, Sorry, not to be we're, two. We're doing pretty decent <laughs> in the five stars. So please, please help us keep that up, guys. Share it with your friends. Make sure people know about the score because that, like I said, helps it grow. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.